Hello everybody, thank you once again for joining me for this week's Popper event. This is uh, going to be a great event for us in the free-to-play space. As many of you know, this channel is dedicated to us uh, free-to-play players and nothing against other channels out there that do this, um, that have like a much more robust collection. Uh, I am not in that boat. So I do work full-time, I've got a family, and one of the reasons why I started this project was to show that it is possible to compete at a high level, uh, even though I am free to play, uh, I still try and uh, you know work hard to get my rating up there, and I play uh, all the events. Just I, I think it's fun to do. But I noticed that some of the uh, guys doing this didn't have uh, a problem. Like just, just pick whatever cards they wanted. And I was like, well, that's not my experience. I've got other stuff going on, uh, and because of that, I do lose every once in a while. So that happens, uh, and I don't mind. You know, I, I don't have the time to play until I win. So I have not yet played through this event, but I do love these events because they are structured so nicely for us in the free-to-play space. They cost 250 gold, and at zero wins, you get 50 gold back plus two cards. They are at least uncommon, and there is a small chance they will be rare or even mythic. I have lost two games in a row in these events before, and actually got a mythic rare out of just losing. So the theory that you could just play and play and play and play, I mean, even like five times in a row and just lose, 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 <laughs> and then just get cards, you could do that. Um, but even at like two wins or three wins, the chance to get rares goes up and up and up. And then at four wins, you're guaranteed one rare. And then five wins, you're guaranteed uh, one rare and a common plus 300 more gold. So you net 50 gold on top of it. This isn't an event where you could play and turn, like I've got 8,200 or 8,525 gold. I'm not going to turn this gold into too much more by trying to win out and win out and win out. You're not going to really build your gold up this way. Um, but you are, it is a good way to get some uncommons for us in the free to play space. And speaking of us in the free to play space, um, I've been kicking around the idea of doing a giveaway. If that's of any interest to you, like a Planeswalker deck code, um, let me know in the comments. Just say, yeah, I would be interested in that, um, you know, and I'll, uh, I'll kick that idea around. So before we get into this event, let's go over the deck tech. Uh, do remember to subscribe for all the event videos like this, deck techs for competitive play, for fun things. I try and do it all. In this deck for Popper, I went with Simic. I think... Adapt is going to be strong in the popper space, I, I think. Uh, again, I haven't played it yet. I'm going with four ops. We'll get all one casting, scry one, draw a card. Four Lanawar Elves. One green, taps for a green mana, and it's also a 1-1. One, one. I got a feeling this is going to eat a few fungal infections and shocks, but we'll find out. I am running two negates, uh, just just for fun, because I feel like if you're running blue, you should run a few counter spells. I also like quench. Uh, for two, it counters any spell unless they pay two. There isn't too many mass board wipes I'm worried about. Uh, I, I don't know. There's just not too much I'm worried about. But I feel like not having quenches in here might might not pay off. So I'm going to run them. Um, I also could run dive down, but I'm not. I just think that I'm okay with cycling through some creatures and then having some counter spells out here. Four Radical Ideas. I like the jump start. I like the draw card, so I think four is in order here. Four Druids of the Cowl. Two casting, one three. Taps for one green. Um, it adds a creature, and it adds some mana ramp, so I like that, because I'm running uh, all kinds of adapts. Um, Soraform Hybrid. This is a three of. It's a one and a green, a two two. And for six, it adapts for four, so it becomes a six six. Uh, we'll see if this ends up being uh, of any kind of value. I'm running four Aeromunculus. It's one, a green, and a blue. It's a two, three flying. And it adapts, uh, for four, it adapts to a three, four flying. So it's going to be pretty uh, pretty powerful. That brings us to Skitter Eel. It's a four casting three, three. So it's one blue and three. It adapts for two, so for three it adapts for two. And it becomes a 5-5. Five, five. I think it's going to be strong. I really do. Uh, well, we'll see. It could still get removed. But I think with the lack of mass removal in, in the popper space, I think we're in business. And I'm running four, four Scuttle Gators. Uh, this could be a mistake. We're going to find out together. Um, it's pretty expensive. It's a 6-casting six 6-6 six, six with Defender. And for 8, 
it adapts to a 9-9, but as long as it has a plus one, plus one counter on it, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Uh, there's no other way. I mean, I could probably put in um, the, the beetle. There's a beetle in green. Let me zoom over to it real quick. Um, for two, where did he go? No, I don't think it's an uncommon. I think it's a common. And it, Iron Shell Beetle. So when Iron Shell Beetle enters the battlefield, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. You could you could mix this in, and then, you know, your Scuttle Gator is a, a big old bomb all of a sudden. Um, but I, I don't know that that's, that that's worth it. Uh, it's just, just something I'm kicking around. Uh, 12 Islands, 8 Forests, and then 4 Simic Guild Gates. I don't have 4 of any one artwork. These are just different artworks on the cards. Uh, that's why there's 2 line items for them. So, let's get into it. We will see how this deck performs in the Popper event. Like I said earlier, I might lose out. I might not. Let us see how this goes. Got to select it and then submit. There we go. Yes and yes and play. Okay. I was playing with the uh, the camera buttons there. Sorry about that. Oh. Wave. Say hi. Opponent goes first. Hmm, I'd like a faster hand here. I think having a radical idea isn't a bad idea, and then into an aeromunculus. It's a little slower. But I do have some card draw, so I'm not afraid of it too much. I'm gonna hang on to it. We're gonna hang on to it. Mono red, lava runners and shocks, and some direct damage. Well, we'll eat some damage here early. But I think, unless this is a two-color deck, Mono Red is going to fizzle out. I'm hoping. Shock. Skewer the Critics. Two shocks. Okay, so we're going to take six damage. Yeah. And then we're, all we're going to do is draw a card with Radical Idea. But then we drop our Aeromunculus, and then we can block the Lava Runner and keep him from activating Spectacle. Light up the stage is uncommon. Skewer the Critics is common. So I'm, I'm betting on the Fizzle. So hopefully he can't nuke my Aeromunculus with... Uh... Oh, he's going Boros. Okay. Interesting. So let's adapt him. And not attack because I need him as a blocker. The blocking his lava runner prevents me from prevents him from activating spectacle. And I've got two arrow so now he can spectacle in. We'll go ahead and block the flyer. And I think he's going to skewer the critics. Nope, he just loses the flyer. Or drop another Aeromunculus and Alanoar Elves. And I'm ready to attack. I'm gonna take the take a chance and attack, even though he may be able to kill my Aramunculus with some direct damage. He can't. I don't think he can kill me this turn. Okay, cool. This is so absurd. And I've got the mana to adapt him next turn, also with my Lana War Elf. And he's just a 9-9, so I'll swing. <laughs> this is so absurd. <laughs> and that's what I was betting on versus like aggro decks where they would fizzle out, but having having the adapt in there would give me some staying power. And I like Aeromunculus a lot uh, in, in the common space. I've been playing with Terramander all week, pretty much. And it has not worked like I hoped it would. I, I really wanted it to be a strong card. It's just a little weaker than I want it to be. This could be good. Hello. So, Soraform Hybrid adapts on turn, f turn 5. <laughs> it's, just, it's just slow. 
Uh, shocked Leno or Elf is a good move. Yep. All right. There's that. We've got too much land in this deck, but I need it for all the adapting. So I don't know. I don't know. It is just a popper deck. There's a the good old Aramunculus. Who's going to adapt next turn for sure? So that would be a wise use of our mana. We'll just adapt him and call it a day. Homie's got menace, which I'm not really worried about. He can block and it will die, but he won't do that because he wants to save it for an attacker. Hmm. Are we going to see... See some Gruul mechanics? Maybe he's going with a bunch of Rioters. Gruul Locket goes down. So now he's got two mana. And we take three. Okay. So I've got the mana to do this on turn six now. So either way, it's a turn six play. I'm going to go with the blue. We'll opt. Uh, I like Radical Idea. Since it's an instant, we'll save the mana and we will Radical Idea on our opponent's turn. And we will attack for three flying as all, because I really do want to try and adapt Soraform next turn, if nothing else. That makes him a very dangerous 6-6 all of a sudden. There's no way he can remove it with red and green. Especially in the common space at 6 health, he's just kind of stuck looking at it. Um, so Barging Sergeant has Haste and Mentor. I, I can't do anything about him casting this, so we're going to have to either block it down or take the damage. So we'll Radical Idea. And we'll go ahead and... Two, three, four, five, six. We'll Radical Idea one more time, ditch the forest. Hopefully we'll get a decent creature like a... Skittereel isn't bad, actually. Okay. So he mentors a guy, but but Barging Sergeant himself doesn't trample, so I just... Let me think here. This is 10 damage I'm about to take. I could take it. I could. And I could kill the Barging... Or I could kill the Barging Sergeant and take 6. But you know what? I'm going to take it. I'm going to play a little risky here. I could adapt my hybrid. He becomes a 6-6 six, six and a hell of a blocker. Mm -mm. I've got a skitter eel. Nope, I should have blocked. Well, poop. That was a mistake. This is strong. Barging Sergeant and Fresh Face for gets for Strike. So, he kills my creatures. Looking at the next few turns, it does not look good. So I'm going to save everybody to use those blockers. We'll play super defensively for, for just a minute. He's got more creatures in there, though, so Negate's not going to do too much. Oh, he's got Cosmo Wave. Okay, well, we counter that. That was a stroke of luck, honestly. That's all that was. Yeah, I'm surprised too. Now, I don't think he risks attacking either. I think he just passes turn and says, okay. Which benefits me, because now I can I can make my uh, Soraform Hybrid a 6-6 six, six, and then not be too scared about his, uh, his fresh face Recruit slash Barging Sergeant death combo there. Yeah, I'm not doing this. He's going to kill my Skitter Eel, and I kill his Barging Brute. Okay. So he attacks, if he attacks with this board, 
I can block his barging sergeant with my Aramunculus, because it dies anyway to fresh face recruit, and I can block, block his fresh face recruit with Sword Form Hybrid. Kill it, kill it, but I can't quench anything. So if he's got another Cosmo Wave, that's the game. Of course, I shouldn't have. I should have blocked down his, his sergeant the Sora form a few turns ago. Rubble Recluse, that sucks. I really wanted a quench for that jerk. Mm-mm. This is this is no good. Where's all my card draw? Already drew with the radical idea twice. He has to attack with rubble belt, which kills my Oh mm, that's game. That'll do it. All right, so I should have killed the the barging sergeant much earlier, and then whittled away with Aramunculus. So now I know. Yeah, that's you've you've won, buddy. That's the game. Okay, we're just not gonna wait for the mentor. <clears throat> we understand the laws of defeat, but even though I've only won a game in this event, you only get two losses. Um, there's still a pretty good chance that we get some decent cards out of this that aren't just uncommons. If we end up getting two uncommons, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's only cost 150 gold. It's it's designed for free-to-play players. I love these events at this price point. They are terrific. Okay, cool. We've got a... Uh, Druid of the Cowl into Aramunculus into Skitter Eel. I like this a lot. Hopefully we can play this right and not get... not get punched in our faces. Druid of the Cowl goes down, turn two, into a turn three, Aramunculus, Manowar Elf combo, and then we can start adapting very quickly. This will be good. He's got charges in his deck. Nope, I don't want the gate out just yet. I don't want arrow, and Manowar Elf. And now I can Skitter Eel with a tap land. Perfect. And then I can adapt. Oh, this is good. This is good. I could adapt the Skitter Eel and the Aramunculus in the same turn, unless he... Well, Luminous Bonds. That's, that's fine. Doesn't even hurt my feelings. This next turn, this is a 5-5. Five five. So I think, I think Adapt is strong and Popper. can cast the Skitter Eel and adapt to this Skitter Eel. That's terrific. Now, I can't negate anything, so that might have been a mistake to just tap out for it. But I'm happy selling out for a 5-5 unless he gets sealed away. Is seal away an uncommon or a common? I forget. I think it's I think it's an available spell to play. Oh, he's playing black and white. A little Sky March action there, okay. Although I'm throwing 10 damage his way next turn, this is going to be be something. And there's the Scuttle Gator. I'm going to hang on to my mana sources and just attack with two five fives. This is exactly how I hoped this game would go. I'm going to hang on to my Negate and hope hope we can counter something wisely here. He might have a creature that's awesome coming down, but I can protect my two five fives, and all of a sudden this is a really scary threat. If not, I drop Scuttle Gator. Scuttle Gator is a scary blocker in this space because I can't do anything about it. Target creature gains death touch until end of turn and draw a card. Do I want to allow him to draw a card? Yes, I don't mind that he draws a card. I can't block him anyway, so the death touch doesn't bother me. However, moment of triumph is tricky. He'll be at 10? Yeah, I don't care. Go ahead. He may not attack with him because he realizes that it's still 10 damage coming his way. Uh, let's negate that. I don't think he can do anything else for 2 mana except maybe revitalize. 
But this way, he's still at 10 and can't attack. Or he dies. I mean, that's pretty close to it, isn't it? No vigilance, so he's attacking. That taps his creature. I'm gonna opt in my main phase, see what I get. He's got something that's holding priority. It's an Aeromunculus. Okay, we'll hang on to that guy. And because I got an Aeromunculus and he's holding two cards, so he might have a Revitalize. And that makes me think that he's about to play it. Or is, or is he just gonna lose the game? Seal away? I gotta think Seal Away is, is a common, right? I, I don't remember. Or is that just the game? Wouldn't end up one. Okay, we're gonna. It was a vicious offer. Alright. He can't possibly have enough removal here. He can block the Skitter Eel, gains two life, loses three to Aeromunculus. Unless he's got another Luminous Bonds, and he's probably running four of those. That could happen. I've got... I can't do anything about his creatures that are in play. I just... the whole point of this deck is to hope that I can overrun him, or... Obviously, Scuttle Gator is very strong. Uh, Scuttle Gator can't be removed. Right. Right, Justice Strike is uncommon. I don't think there's a single common that'll remove Scuttle... Oh, I should have adapted Aeromunculus. I forgot. But it's okay. We're doing so well here. So he'll still be at five after this turn. He'll gain two, lose two. And then the pressure's on. We'll adapt Scuttle Gator. We'll swing in for nine here, five here. Two here. I will not adapt Aeromunculus. I'll just let the flying do its thing. What could he? What's he thinking about? Like a, a vicious offering here? Yeah, he should have just done that. You don't have to block and then do it. He can't vicious offering my Scuttle Gator. business. Yeah. It's a 9-9 that just attacks like normal. He's not a defender anymore. There's a couple ways to get there. I don't mind just... Okay. So he could block my Aeromunculus and kill him. That's that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does not look good. Not looking good. Yep. Cool. It's kind of working. Uh, I think, I mean, maybe a couple of tweaks, but for the most part, it does what I hoped it would do. And it's just a bunch of commons, so I've almost got my um, one win away from this event costing nothing. So these, I love these. At 250 gold, they are designed for free to play. There's no reason not to do this even you know, like five times, just even if you lose out or resign early in some games just to get the, uh, the games over with. But they, they don't take too long. You're just playing a bunch of commons. It's a different way to play the game. Scuttle Gators. Druid of the Cowl is good because he lives for a while. So I could do Simic Guildgate. Turn one. Turn two, three, if my Druid lives. It's a little risky to keep this hand without a uh, an early creature. But I don't mind too much. Because in theory, I'll have a, a third turn skitter into a fifth turn skitter -keater. I really hope we don't get hosed by persistent petitioners. This is a thing. Because you can have any number of petitioners in a deck. So you can just have 
40 petitioners in 20 land. And, 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 oh no. And there's nothing I can do about it. All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> Skitter eel might be stronger. One blue mana. And he can do two more. And then he can nuke the top 12 cards. So does he do two? Does he have the two? Okay, he does. <clears throat> awesome. This is a good idea too. May as well. May as well do it. No? So the good news here is that he can't he can't beat me in four turns by mill. Oh, he can. He can now. Oh, boy. This is going to be tight. So he probably... Nope, he takes it because he knows what's happening. <clears throat> and then, of course, I'm just going to draw a card here. Alright, so Scuttle Gator's out. Their homunculus is in. We are on the clock. There it goes. This is this is good too. If we lose the persistent petitioners, I say well played. That's all you should put in this deck is just persistent petitioners. Yep. <laughs> now he's got two blockers here though, so that's good too for him. Okay, arrow. He could technically gang block and kill it. I hope he didn't figure that out just now. <laughs> oh, man. I bet you this deck wins a lot of games just with persistent petitioners. And he could lose one. It doesn't matter. I've got 34 cards. I'm on the clock. He's going to take three. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah, one of them died. Ha. Boy, I don't, I don't think, I don't think there's a lot I can do. I think we're toast. This is where, if he's facing off against a black deck that has any kind of removal, like, like, this is where, um, not fungal infection, but the other one would come in real handy. I can't even, not even a scuttle gator, so if I scuttle gator... <laughs> That's silly. Let's get rid of the scuttle gator. I don't need three. That's too many. What else, what could I possibly get that is going to make a difference this turn and help me win this game? A Simic Guild Gate, that's, that's what it's going to be. <clears throat> and there's no, like, all the removal for persistent petitioners are rare, so there is no, like, Deafening Clarion, uh, uh, Cry of the Carnarine, well, Cry of the Carnarine wouldn't do it because they'd be, uh, they'd be zero ones at the end of that. Ritual of Soot. Like there's just nothing. Oh man, that's brutal. That's it. 40 petitioners, 20 lands. Game over. Yep. How funny. What a way to go. Go ahead. I want to see this happen. He deserves to tap out and, and win this way. That's fine. Yep. <laughs> if you've got petitioners, throw them in there. This would this would work too. I'm doing that next. I'm going to do petitioners just to see how many games you end up losing. And, and to what? Um, any kind of damage to your petitioners. But there's you have so many of them, they just keep coming. 
that's exciting. And there's no mass removal or, or not too many counter spells. So let's see how we did in the event. Two wins, not too bad. Two and two, 50%. 150 gold. So it cost me 50 gold for these two cards. Pretty much 25 gold apiece, both uncommon. So we're just buying cards. Call to the Feast. This isn't bad. I needed a fourth one, I think. And a Rock Charger. Nothing great. Um, but, you know, it's just, like I said, it's a different way to play the game. It's kind of fun. There's a few different options in there. And it is built strongly for us in the uh, free-to-play space. Uh, those two cards cost me 25 gold apiece. And it's worth it because there's a chance that they're rare or uh, or even mythic. You can get mythics out of this. I think I got um, an Arclight Phoenix in the last event like this one. And, um, I mean, they don't even take all that much time. What's it been, like half an hour or something doing this uh, little video demonstration if you just get in and play the games it's a lot faster so i uh, hope you guys enjoyed that look for more of this uh, content in the future thanks so much for staying with me enjoy your playtimes